This just proves that while all bipartisan bills, uh, almost all, almost all bipartisan bills are, are bad, almost all partisan bills are bad too, particularly ones initiated by the Democrats. So um, here we've got a bill that um, was the Build Back Better, Build Back Better, the BBB, um, which is, uh, yeah, people are listing other semiconductor companies. Yeah, Texas Instruments makes semiconductors. That's right. I forgot about Texas. Used to be massive in the 1980s. A lot of innovation came out of TI. Uh, but the Build Back Better um, seemed dead. You remember Build Back Better originally was proposed at $4 trillion? $4 trillion? I mean, the numbers that these people throw around, a billion a here and a billion there, why, why is nobody throwing a billion at me? I mean, a billion, you know how much we could do with a billion? You know how much we could do to change the world? With a I promise to spend the entire billion on changing the world. We could accelerate, accelerate the, the, uh, the takeover of the world by laissez-faire capitalism by decades if we had a billion dollars right now. Nobody's giving me a billion now. So, um, but, but if you think about uh, what government does, it's, it's, it's a, a 10 billion here, 20 billion there, 100 billion there. It's just, the numbers are just staggering, staggering. Anyway, uh, Build Back, Back Better went from 4 trillion to then 2 trillion to then 1 trillion, and then basically uh, Senator Manchin, uh, the Democrat senator from South uh, it was from West Virginia, basically said, nah, all of these bills are too big, too much spending. Uh, I'm not going to support it. I am, um, I, I'm, I'm against it, and he shut it down. And just in the last couple of days, Manchin has been dragged into some cave or some office or some smoke-filled room. His fingernails are being extracted. His wrists are being twisted. His hair is being pulled. Uh, clips have been placed on I don't know what, and he has changed his mind. Now, he hasn't changed his mind to the extent that he is now supporting the $4 trillion, $2 trillion, or $1 trillion bills. It's only to the extent now that he is willing to do something. Exactly how big this bill will be is hard to tell. Um, it, it, it involves a number of different components, Let's see, I have, a, I have a little, I had a chart here with the different components of it. Where is that chart? Yeah, it has, so it has a, it has a healthcare component. They're going to reduce drug costs. You should be really happy to reduce drug costs. Um, they're also going to increase tax collection. And they have a new tax, a new corporate tax. And then, that's, a, that's two sections, healthcare and taxes. Then they have a whole section on climate and energy, and then they've got money spent, a significant amount of money. This, this is the one that really scares me of all of these bills. The thing that scares me the most is the money allocated in the uh, Inflation Reduction Bill to growing the IRS. They are going to grow the IRS. They're going to dramatically spend more on tax collection because they believe, they believe, that you guys are not paying everything that you owe. And you're cheating. And as a consequence, they, you know, they think that if they increase enforcement, that they can generate more revenue for the government. So they dramatically increase the, uh, the number of, um, I don't want to insult the IRS, because I don't want them to come after me. And even though I haven't done anything wrong, I don't want them to come after me. So um, I'll just say that these people are nuts if they think that throwing money at the IRS is going to actually increase revenue. It doesn't work that way. Um, but they've got $300 billion of deficit reduction. And... Uh, the climate change is not just climate change. It's 
a bunch of other stuff. So, so let's go over this bill a little bit. Let's try to see uh, what they are doing. How did, there we go. All right. So there is a health care section. The health care section basically has, um, they're going to repeal, repeal a drug rebate rule. Well, I guess the, the government rebates a certain amount of drugs. Um, that'll, they say, right, this, these are all government estimates, very accurate. Accountants at the government are super accurate. They never miss by a factor of 10 or 100. Never, ever, in your dreams. So we've got, uh, we've got a repeal of the drug rebate. We've got savings from an inflation cap on drug prices. So uh, you won't be able to increase your drug prices, you private, greedy, capitalist, you know, a drug manufacturer. We're going to limit your increases. And then, and then we are going to have Medicare, which is the largest drug buyer in the United States, maybe in the world, I don't know, negotiate prices. So they negotiate, they're going to be able to push the drug manufacturers cheaper and cheaper and cheaper because you, you, got, you, got to, you got to fulfill Medicare. You got to play by Medicare's rules. So they're going to squeeze every ounce of profit they can out of the drug companies. They're going to make drugs go through the roof, the price of drugs, through the roof, that are sold to us through private insurance. Those prices are going to get, because they have to compensate for all the losses that are going to be generated from Medicare. They're going to have to compensate for the losses from, I mean, it's unbelievable to me. I have to calm down a second. It truly is unbelievable to me. Here you have an industry, and I know the drug industry is not exactly popular among conservatives and libertarians. Luckily, I'm not a conservative or libertarian, so I don't care. But here you have an industry that is working to develop life-saving drugs. You have an industry that is involved in, in massive innovations. And if it doesn't do the innovations themselves, they provide the capital for biotech companies that they buy to do the innovations. But this is an industry that is, has the potential and is likely to save billions of lives. Certainly millions, hundreds of millions. This is one of the most virtuous industries there is. And it's an industry who plows their profits into research and development. If you look at the profitability of big pharma, it's not that profitable. It's as profitable as any other industry. And the reason, and, and it takes its profits and it plows them into research and development. So second to the U.S. government, the largest, in, largest sector that invests in research and development is, actually it's not second to, I think it's larger than the U.S. government, is the pharmaceutical industry. So we're going to save costs. We're going to save costs so that Mnuchin and these other guys can have all kinds of goodies. So the way to save costs is we're going to um, restrain the profitability of drug companies. We're going to limit how much money they can make. We're going to squeeze them for every last dime. And the fact that that's going to reduce research and development into the future, that's a future. Who can predict? And the fact that that is going to reduce drug development, innovation, progress, life-saving drugs. Eh, who cares? The main thing is, Mnuchin is saying to himself, the main thing is we lowered health care costs at the expense of human life, at the expense of future innovation. It's just disgusting. The IRS is expecting to increase tax selection by $204 billion because of this bill, because it's getting, I don't know, $80 billion to invest, and it's generating $204 billion in outcome. Does anybody actually believe these numbers? 
I don't. Then there's a 15% corporate minimum tax. Again, they're assuming that they're going to get a huge amount of money from this. I don't understand from where or how, given that um, $315 billion, given the corporate taxes, are, they already exist, who is the extra uh, that they're going to tax here? Of course, uh, you know, if you tax corporations, that means they have less to pay out as dividends. That means there's less capital gains. So that there's less taxed over there. It, it's the corporate tax is the dumbest tax of all. All this new 15% corporate minimum tax is going to do is increase prices and lower wages. Increase prices and lower wages. That's what increasing the corporate tax is always. It's actually not prices, it's, it's prices, but it's also wages. Uh, what else are they going to do? Uh, we said $300 billion of deficit reduction, so they're going to take money from one pocket and put it into another pocket. Um, and all of this, for what? To spend on climate change. So, so let's look more closely at, at what they're going to do for climate change. Let me just see how I can, what is this? Oh, first of all, just to close out on health care, they can extend the subsidies on Obamacare, you know, subsidies that go to, to, to pay for the insurance that, whose prices went up because of Obamacare. So now you need a subsidy in order to actually afford it. The subsidy was supposed to be sunset because you're supposed to not need it because Obamacare was supposed to keep insurance prices low. It was going to lower insurance prices so everybody could afford it. But it's done the opposite, so now we need to extend the subsidies. Uh, guess what? You know, this is, uh, you know, it, yes, I mean, this is just it, it, the absurdities, right? They couldn't project it right when Obamacare passed. Why would any projection they give you now, any projection for cost savings, for deficit reduction, for any of these things, why would it even register as data? It's made up numbers. It's sticking, you, you know, your finger into the wind and saying, oh, 300. Let's make it 300. I think we can reduce the deficit by 300. And how much will the IRS raise if we give them X amount of money? Oh, I don't know. How about 215 billion? Let's just do that. It's complete bullshit numbers. There is zero economics behind this. You know, the first time government estimated, I think it was 1968, they estimated the cost of Medicare 10 years in the future. By what factor do you think they got it wrong? So let's say they, they said it would be 100. What do you think it was? Fact of two, was it 200? Did it cost 200 instead of 100? Did it cost 10x? Did it cost 1,000 instead of 100? What, what do you think? What, what was your estimate? of how, how they underestimating the true cost of Medicare in 1968 when it passed. Same congressional budget office, same kind of economist, the same finger up in the air figuring out by what factor did they miss? So 100 turned into 1,000? No. They missed by a factor of 100. So 100 turned into 10,000. So for every $100 they predicted Medicare would cost, it actually cost $10,000. Why does anybody believe any number these guys ever produce? All right, they're also going to redesign Medicare Part D. Doesn't sound good. But then I don't know the Medicare Part D is already good. All right, let's look at the, the, the crux of this, the climate change initiatives. All right. We're going to get new clean manufacturing tax credits. Yay. Um, we're going to get clean electricity grants and loans. Some of it, by the way, to utilities that have nuclear power plants to keep them going. So at least they recognize that nuclear is clean. But most of it to the usual suspects, more solar, more wind, more nonsense. A new clean energy technology accelerator. How much money is that? How much? Ooh, 
how cool is this? 30 billion, 30 billion to new clean energy technology accelerator. There is no end to how much our politicians really want to be venture capitalists. And they want to get into financing technology because, you know, Silicon Valley and, and, and tech companies and venture capitalists have just done such a lousy job at it. We need the government to step in and save us all from, from just the, the, the horror of privately funding technology. So we need a, a new energy technology accelerator. I wonder how they're going to decide who to fund and who not. I wonder how much of that $30 billion will go to nuclear or fusion, or how much of it will go to politicians, pet favorites in New York, because Schumer is key. Um, some of this is going to go for funds for clean agriculture. I guess that's more ethanol subsidies. Um, I guess that's just farm subsidies. I mean, politicians love farm subsidies. There are a lot of voters in the Midwest. They love farm subsidies. And then funds, again, not enough electric vehicle manufacturing. Ford is not investing enough. GM is not investing enough. Tesla is not investing enough. Uh, Hyundai and, 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 and uh, Kia and Toyota are not investing enough. So the government is going to put a fund of $20 billion to play winners and losers on the EV and the EV market. Now, one of the things they had to do for Mnuchin is part of this bill is the freeing up of um, uh, uh, drilling, um, uh, so the freeing uh, the, the, on government land um, in Alaska. So uh, he's getting a little bit there. He's getting money uh, that is ultimately going to benefit coal. Some of this, I think some of this uh, clean e electricity grants and loans is somehow going to fund and, and going to help uh, the coal industry. And indeed, uh, one of the big coal companies was a strong lobbyist for this bill, because in spite of the fact that a lot of money is going to cellular, sorry, to solar and, and uh, wind, a bunch of it is going to subsidize coal. And of course, the Greens are going to look the other way because what they, you know, oh, okay, so we get, we'll give Mnuchin a little bit of coal. We get those solar panels. How cool is that? Um, so there's a, you know, there's a, let's see, some of the things in this. There's a methane fee. There's going to be now a, a fee for producing methane. It's going to go up. Right now, there's a, you have to pay a fee to produce methane. Um, and it, 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 it's going to go up beyond 750 per, what, metric ton to 900 and then 1,500 by 2026. Methane is this, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a really bad, in quotes, um, uh, gas that contributes supposedly to climate change. Um, we're going to uh, get significant uh, increases in drilling on public lands, we're promised. Um, the, although the royalty rate, it looks like, um, is, uh, is going to go up, although it's going to be capped. We're going to have some new leases on offshore. So there's quite a bit of new drilling here. So I, this is what Mnuchin pressed, is that oil and gas get its big. A lot of offshore wind. We're going to get offshore wind. They're going to overturn uh, Trump's 10-year moratorium on offshore wind leases. They're going to build a ton of offshore winds in uh, Puerto Rico, I guess. Huh. All right, Puerto Rico. We're going to get some offshore windmills. Guam, American Samoa, and U.S. Virgin Islands, but also, I guess, off the coast. Um, oh, there's going to be $60 billion. $66 billion for environmental justice. Hmm. Environmental justice. You know, because the environment is very unjust. So, God, what, what a concept, environmental justice is something you can only apply to human beings. You can't have environmental justice. So $3 million, three, sorry, million, I'm so 1980s, $3 billion block grants for frontline communities. Frontline communities? I don't know, communities that have bad weather, communities that have built themselves in flood zones, Communities maybe close to, I don't know, close to hurricane zones. I don't know. 
$3 billion for port air pollution reduction grants. So the ports are going to get money to reduce uh, air pollution. A billion dollars is going to go to clean heavy-duty vehicles, such as school buses and garbage trucks. Garbage trucks are going to get clean. How cool is that? And by the way, the U.S. Postal Service, one of the most inefficient, unproductive entities on the planet, is going to get $3 billion to changing its fleet of vehicles to zero emissions. $27 billion, greenhouse gas reduction fund, which will be a basically a federal green bank, um, and uh, dole out $8 billion for projects in low-income and disadvantaged communities. So that's environmental justice for you. Uh, black lung funding, um, there's no number here for that, but that's, that's to help out, again, the coal industry. It's the Black Lung Disability Trust Fund that is set up to pay um, for liability that uh, you know, coal companies had towards, uh, towards some of the employees. Um, so there, there's a tax that funds these benefits. It expired last year. And uh, anyway, we're going to be electrifying homes. I thought homes in the United States were already electrified. Huh. Well, they're going to give them $9 billion in, um, in rebates. Rebates. I guess if they go, I don't know, solar or something. Um, we're going to, oh, we're going to, $500 million to deploy the Defense Production Act to help build out domestic manufacturing of heat pumps. Because we don't have enough heat pumps in America, it turns out. Capitalism did not produce enough heat pumps. So we need the defense, but and you can go on and on. Oh, we're going to plant a lot of trees. And by the way, we're going to spend billions of dollars on um, drought and drinking water and an endangered species. And, uh, but we're not going to build any desalination plants. Can't do that. Can't do that. Anyway, you can see this is just a, an absurd, ridiculous... Just like the CHIP Act. And, and by the way, Congress is hailing itself as this incredibly productive Congress. They gave us the bailout bill when, when Biden was first elected that got us 9.2% inflation, among many other things. It's not giving us these two bills that are going to increase central planning, increase government intervention in the economy, uh, subsidize, well, I was going to say subsidize all the wrong things, but... You never subsidize the right things. There's no such thing. Um, just a series of disasters that are just going to cripple this country just a little bit more, just going to make us a little weaker, just going to make the U.S. economy a little slower. Horrible. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.